Welcome to part 7, getting your housing in order. What we're going to look at now is putting this together. I've got a few bits that comes out of the kit. This top pin here for the ABS sensor, if you have one, will have the seal and the bushing which you put into place. We also need some shims which come with a kit. Thrust washer or bush and the top pin bearing housing. Bottom pin with the gasket and the bottom bearing with its race. Okay, there's also the axle tube seal. And we have the old shims which we've cleaned up. These ones here for the TD5 axle which we'll look at later. And then there's this damper bar. We're going for a new Teflon coated ball for our project here. This will replace the grotty chrome ball that we had. Okay, also there's a new seal and a backing plate, a retainer plate. Okay, so starting on the ball here, first thing we're going to do, you remember we stripped out the uh, races. I'm using a hard surface and what I'm going to do is put the race and the top pin in, okay, or the top pin bushing. The race at the on the bottom here, you know, this is deceptive. This is actually on an angle, so you've got to square it up and I'm using a hammer which the steel is a lot softer than the bearing itself or the bearing race I'm just going to gently tap it in square it up so it goes in evenly and then give it a bit more of a tap on the edges evenly using the face of the hammer completely we're not using a chisel here okay so that's evenly tapping it round and getting it in and using a brass drift I'm gonna drive it harder in just on the edge just to drive it home to its last point and we're looking to get this to seat properly if not what you'll find is when the weight of the vehicle is on this and you go over a bump that'll actually seat it a bit better which you don't want that's perfectly seated now right up to the edge okay you can see that in there alright so that is the race is now at home this is standard practice for a bearing race Okay, so now we're going to do the top pin bushing, or Roco bush if you like. It's not called this on a Discovery, but this is what it's called elsewhere. Alright, so that needs to be sat in there rather nicely. Now instead of using a hammer and just tapping it down, what I'm going to use is an old pin. Of course you'd have bought a new pin with your kit, so we can use this pin as a driver. It's perfectly shaped to do it. So we'll fit that on there and then tap it home. You can probably see the equipment bouncing about on the table. So bang, that's home. Okay. Right, now I'm going to tell you something about this. On this bushing itself, there is a slot in it here. Okay, now that's to keep away from the seal. It's important to remember, especially on this type, is that this has to be in a certain position. So we're looking at it and it's about here. And to make it a bit clearer, here's a diagram. Okay, remember this because the wiper seal has to avoid this bit. Anyway, just make sure that you haven't got any burrs at all around the edge and you've no swarf on the bearing race at all. And we're ready to move on. The ball is universal, which means you could use it for either side because when you fit it together on the axle, it has a certain set of holes and you can't get it wrong once it's bolted up. Now you probably realised I made a mistake because I didn't put a seal in before putting that on. Okay, so we'll put a seal in now. This seal is to stop any fluid coming from the axle into the swivel housing or vice versa. Just using a hammer there to tap it down on the edge. And the seal, when they go in square, they work or as the workshop manual actually says is a leading edge in. Now I'm just making sure that it is absolutely square in the housing. Just tapping it around with a hammer is not good enough. I'm just going to square it up so it is right and it's not distorted. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing there. A seal driver won't put this in because we've got the leading edge out but you just want to make sure that that is perfectly level with the spigot on the flange here. Okay, so that's done. We can put it on the axle. Okay, so you've got a gasket between the two. The bolt holes match up exactly. You can only get this on one way. 
and like the gasket you probably have to work out which way around it goes okay so once it's there you can then put it into place all right like this now that's wrong completely what you need is the top pin somewhere at the top once it's located that's all right the bolts that you use which bolt this flange on they need Loctiting that's Loctite 270 on the threads I'm putting this on and I'm gonna to have to take it back off again so I'm just doing this as a demo but you need to Loctite these bolts and tighten them up you'll probably even notice that I've made a mistake here if not then I'll tell you okay the seal has to go on to the ball first of all the right way around so that'll be like this and then you need the seal retainer plate and once that's on you can then put your gasket on the right way around and mate it up to the flange if you're doing it on the vehicle okay now I don't like doing it this way because that means that the seal is vulnerable at this point so I prefer to do it on the bench you can see the seals actually hanging there and it could damage the lips so I'd rather do it on the bench where it's a lot more convenient and I can get the retainer around the right way as well because there's a certain way that goes so the choice is yours either build it up on the vehicle or build it up on the bench it doesn't make any difference whatsoever to be honest with you just from personal experience and personal preference on the bench is probably actually the best way of doing this One way of doing this is just to bolt it up loosely with three bolts so I've got the housing in place on the axle. Okay, I can then go ahead and put the housing on and shim it up. That's easy enough to do. So preparing the housing, the first thing to do is to get the bottom pin and put it in place with the gasket. Depending on what model you have, you'll also have something like this uh, harmonic dampening bar or whatever the Discovery designers actually think this is for. And notice the way that the brake plate clip is. It's facing towards the outside. Now I'll tighten these up and the torque wrench setting is on the screen here for these. Once this is done up, you can forget about it. Okay. Right, well I'm just going to show you something here. The reason I put the pin in first, where the bearing is, I can pop the bearing on like this and then I can fit it to the axle quite easily as such. Okay, that should work in 99.9% .9 of the cases but the first thing to do is to lubricate it. Make sure you've got grease in there and give it a chance to work. I'm just using an EP grease here, which you could use your one shot if you like. But don't use oil because that just drains away. If you have this arrangement of thrust bearing and two plates, the thrust bearing goes between the two plates before it goes into the top bushing housing for the top pin. And I'm also greasing these up because this will get less lubrication. It's always good to give components the best chance possible. So again as I said it's putting the thrust bearing between the two plates which gives it a working surface if you like or, or two lands and then put it in place and grease the bushing as well on the inside there so that's all right you'll appreciate the fact that these will actually stick in there once that's lubed up it's putting the housing on I slip that on and then we'll get the top pin in place if you noticed I've put some shims on and uh, I'm slotting it in like this okay and then it'll be bolted up I'd like to make you aware of this first the housing and the pin just check them before you put them together to make sure that the pin will actually go in and also into the bushing just to make sure give yourself an easy life when you're assembling it on the axle <laughs> 